All right, so now we've learned how to solve two different types of problems uh, using trigonometry. We've learned what to do when you're given one side and one angle. And we've also learned what to do when you're given two sides. Uh, now, most of the previous problems that we've been doing in this latest portion of the videos, most of the problems have been of this type, where we were given two sides. So I wanted to test whether you were awake by briefly going back and giving you a problem of the previous type. You can see that in this problem, we were given one side and one angle. In this problem, we were given one side and one angle. So I just wanted to make sure that you still remember that previous technique. Um, so it's very important uh, in physics to uh, decide which of these two situations you're in and which method to use to attack it. So it's important not to let learning this method um, confuse you about the first method. And you don't want to get the first method confused with the second method. So you have to keep practicing until you can easily use the appropriate method for the type of problem that you're working on. Remember that in this situation, you're usually given the hypotenuse in an angle, like we were here. Almost always in physics, you'll be given the hypotenuse in an angle. Uh, and then, if you're given the hypotenuse and an angle, you can use the cosine to find the adjacent side. It's just the hypotenuse times the cosine. And you can use the sine to find the opposite side. It's just the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. Uh, if you want to, you can keep writing these preliminary equations, but eventually you'll probably get comfortable going straight to these types of equations. So usually in this situation, you're given the hypotenuse and an angle. And then the adjacent side is the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. And the opposite side is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. If you ever forgot that, you can, you can easily work it out again by going back to these original equations, which come from Sokotoa. But it should be plain from Sokotoa that if you um, know the hypotenuse, then you should use the sine to find the opposite side. And if you know the hypotenuse, you should use cosine to find the adjacent side. Notice that the tangent isn't very um, useful when you're given the hypotenuse. All right. Uh, and um, the other type of problem that we've been practicing is where you're given two sides. That was a different, that's different from this problem. But we've also done problems where you're given two sides. Uh, and those take a slightly different um, approach. Usually for this type of problem, you're going to be given two legs. Uh, well, when you're given two legs, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. Um, and when you're given the two legs, you can use the inverse tangent to find uh, the angle. We've done many examples of that as well. Uh, because if you're given two legs, you're given the opposite and the adjacent legs. So clearly the tangent would then be useful. I hope this problem was very easy for you. If this problem was not boringly easy, you need to keep redoing it until it is boringly easy. Make sure that now that we've learned this method, it doesn't start making you forget this method. Here's our next problem. This side has a length of 12. Here's a right angle. This side has a length of 7. Figure out this angle and this side, please. We can use asterisks to indicate the sides that we were given. And also we can use an asterisk to remind ourselves that we're focusing on this angle. This angle wasn't given, but this is the angle we want to focus on because that's what the question is about. Now, this is one of the problems where you're given two sides. When you're given two sides, you don't need a trig function to find the third side. You can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's write the general theorem first. Hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. It's an excellent idea to first write the general formula and then plug in. Don't just plug in without writing the general formula until you're very comfortable with this material. The hypotenuse we don't know. We know one of the legs is 7, and we know the other leg is 12. Hypotenuse squared equals 7 squared plus 12 squared. You can do this whole calculation in one step on your calculator. Just type in 7 squared plus 12 squared. And your calculator should tell you that that is 193. Hypotenuse squared equals 193. To get the hypotenuse by itself, we have to remove the squaring function. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. If we take the square root of the left-hand side, we're left with just the hypotenuse. But then we have to take the square root of the right-hand side as well. Hypotenuse is root 193. According to the calculator, the square root of 193 is 13.9. Build that into your sketch.
Well, we still have to figure out this angle. Uh, if we haven't done so already, we should label the three sides. Hypotenuse, the side that's adjacent to the asterisk here is the adjacent side. And this side of length 12 is opposite to the angle with the asterisk. So that's the opposite side. Now remember that the convention is that we're going to try to use the two sides we were originally given. As the asterisks indicate, we were originally given the adjacent side and the opposite side. So toe up, we want to use the tangent, which deals with the opposite and the adjacent sides. Tangent. We can't just say tangent, we have to say the tangent of what angle? So let's give this angle a name. Uh, just for the heck of it, I'm going to call it alpha. Let's call this angle alpha. There's no law of the universe that says that every angle has to be called theta. So I'm going to call this angle L alpha. So now we're taking the tangent of alpha. There's no particular reason why I decided to call it alpha. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, if you want to, you can call the angle bob, but I decided to call it alpha. So the tangent of alpha equals toa, opposite over adjacent. The opposite side was the length 12, and the adjacent side was the length 7. I'm going to postpone this calculation. First, I'm going to get rid of the tangent on the left-hand side by doing the opposite. The opposite of tangent is inverse tangent. If you take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, that eliminates the tangent function, and all you're left with is alpha. You can see why it's so important to give a name to the angle. If we didn't give a name to the angle, we'd have nothing left on the left-hand side. Uh, just a gaping void. Well, we don't want that. So we better have uh, a, a, an angle here so that there'll be something left when we remove the tangent function. Now, we just took the inverse tangent of the left-hand side. The golden rule of algebra tells us that now we have to take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side. We can do this in one step on a scientific calculator inverse tangent, uh, and then we need a parenthesis if the calculator doesn't put it in to tell the calculator that there's going to be two parts to this inverse tangent. Inverse tangent or arc tangent of 12 sevenths is approximately 59.7 degrees. Fifty-nine point seven degrees is alpha. I think an easy mistake to make here would be to take the tangent of 12 sevenths. Well, don't do that. Um, we're not taking the tangent of the 12 sevenths, we're taking the inverse tangent. So you always have to be very careful um, uh, to decide whether you should be taking a trig function or an inverse trig function. And the only way to know is to think carefully about each step of the algebra. In this case, the algebra was dictating that we have to take the inverse tangent of both sides. So we took the inverse tangent of 12 sevenths. Remember again that now we've learned how to do two different types of problems. We've learned how to use trigonometry when you're given one side and one angle to figure out the other parts of the triangle. And we've used how to use trigonometry when you're given two sides to figure out the other parts of the triangle. Uh, and in the last, type of last couple of problems, I've been kind of switching back and forth just to make sure that you're on your toes and that you can really choose the appropriate method for the type of problem that you're working on. Um, so in this case, we went back to the type of problem where we're given two sides. So this is the way uh, to do that. Uh, so it's really important that you do lots of practice on this material. So much practice that it's boringly easy for you to do these problems and so that it's boringly easy for you to decide um, which type of method you need to use. It's, um, there's no excuse for getting confused about when to use one method and when to use the other method. You've got to do practice, practice, practice until these problems are easy for you because the course is going to get a lot harder than this. Um, but we're going to be having to use these techniques repeatedly on those harder problems. Well, if we're taking a long time for this simple part, um, how are we going to do the harder parts of those problems? So keep practicing this until these are very easy and so that you know that you're not going to get confused about when to attack this type of problem and when you need the methods for this type of problem.